Many of you know that you shouldn't believe everything you find in online family trees, but today's question deals with what do you do when you find junk in online trees? Howdy, I'm Deva Noel Lee and this is Family History Fanatics where we teach you how to research your family and have a whole lot of fun along the way. Today's question came from our uh, video suggestion box and the question was, how do I handle false information, inaccurate information, or just plain junk that I find in the online trees at Ancestry.com? Now, before we get started, there's a lot of junk on a lot of trees, both in print and online. So what do you do specifically in Ancestry? Let's get started. The rule of thumb when you are working with Ancestry's online member trees is to double check all of that information before you add it to your tree. You will soon find that people in their online tree, in Ancestry and some other websites, they think they're related to Thor and Priam of Troy. Mm -hmm. Fictional characters, guys. There's no evidence that you're related to any of these individuals. So, if we can make egregious errors like that, there are going to be even smaller errors. So always double check before you add anything new to your family tree. I'm gonna give you a very clear example of something that happens in my family tree. Again, and again, and again. On Ancestry particularly, this is the case of Charles Gordon. Notice where Charles Gordon is born. He's born in Pennsylvania and died in Ohio. Not too crazy. The time period is 1801, 1875, 1873. That looks good. But, but in 1806, his sister was born in Illinois. It's possible. But that's the least of the problems with this online tree. You see, Charles in this online tree that keeps perpetuating and propagating and spawning has a father named Nathaniel Charles Gordon Jr. Oh, and by the way, sometimes there's Lieutenant Nathaniel Charles Gordon Jr. connected to him. And notice where Nathaniel was born? Virginia. And he died? In North Carolina. I'm not seeing a Pennsylvania. Oh, oh, his, Nathaniel's wife, Nancy Gordon, she was born in Virginia. Okay, okay. Nathaniel and his wife, Nancy, are from the same place. And um, Nathaniel dies in North Carolina. And you know, some 20 something years later, she dies in Georgia. Still in the realm of possibilities. But how the heck did they get up to Pennsylvania to have a kiddo and then, okay. And they also made it over to Illinois before coming back. I'm starting to get curious. So now we're gonna start looking at the timeline of Nathaniel Gordon and his wife, Nancy. So in 1770, um, he has a son and um, in 1777, he gets married. Now, this is still okay. Um, now, Thomas's birth could be an approximate. He was born about 1770, given the time period. Um, it might not have been an illegitimate child. It could have been an illegitimate child, or he could be a son from a previous marriage. Not too, bad, too um, many red flags. They're all from Wilkes County, Wilkes County, Wilkes County. Okay, so they started in Pennsylvania and then he um, died in North Carolina. That's fitting in. I'm still not seeing Pennsylvania or Illinois or Ohio, okay? So North Carolina, everything's looking good with this North Carolina. We scroll down to 1780 and then things are gonna start looking a little weird. Um, so the first thing We've got this Lancaster County property, this residence, that isn't too odd for this time period because what happened is Nathaniel moved um, from Virginia to 
North Carolina and he's selling his property back there. Okay, so that's still looking okay, but I'm really concerned about the fact that in 1784, um, Nancy, oh my, she's superwoman. She has a son in South Carolina and a daughter in North Carolina in the same year. Not sure how that works. Now, in 1790, in Wilkes County, um, Nathaniel has another wife, Mary Lenore. I'm not sure how you say that, but okay. So now we haven't gotten to Charles, who was born in Pennsylvania and moved to Ohio. But if this is to be accurate, either Nathaniel is a bigamist Nancy, or Nancy is not the mother of Charles. I'm really getting confused. This is hurting my brain. Um, and now, okay, we're not in Wilkes County anymore. We're in Caldwell County in 1799. And then we have a daughter in Pennsylvania. Okay, now that's possible. That's possible. But in 1800, they're also in Wilkes County. Why did they go up to Pennsylvania to have a baby? Where were they moving? But then why did they come back? I don't know. I'm really starting to question this tree. So they have this daughter in Pennsylvania. They have a residence in North Carolina, but then they go back up to Pennsylvania. Okay, well, maybe they sold the property, but in five years later, they have a baby in Illinois, and then they go back to North Carolina? Okay. Um, okay. Does your brain hurt yet? Now, it's possible. This could be the family. But the more I look into Nathaniel Charles Gordon, who married Nancy Gordon, they really are from, they moved from Virginia to Wilkes County, North Carolina, and that's it. They didn't go to Illinois. They didn't go to Pennsylvania. They didn't go anywhere. They stayed in North Carolina. So Charles does not belong to this family. It's a junk tree. And oh, by the way, it has no sources. Makes it even more of a junk tree. So I hope I can emphasize to you, even though my, my situation isn't perfect, that before you go accepting all of that new information about the family that's going every which way but loose, that you double check before you accept. Fair enough. So my second tip is that, what do you do in ancestry? Well, in ancestry, we all have private trees. These are my tree. And you know what the problem with people having their own individual tree? They're right, and nobody else can tell you different. Now, there are some people who don't like to admit that they're wrong, but if you give us, me, others, quality information that tells us that we are wrong, we'll happily renegotiate what's going on on our tree. But not everybody cares that you want to be accurate. Why are you messing with their tree? They can do whatever they want. I know, it's kind of frustrating. Which is going to be my next tip, but for now, reach out to people. Maybe the person with the tree errors can be change their mind. Maybe they actually have information you didn't know about. It's happened. And maybe they're just stubborn. And when it comes to stubborn people, the only thing you can do with them is number one, write up what you believe to be accurate. And you can create a document and attach that to Ancestry.com. You can write up the conclusions that you have and correct information and create a blog post. You can write your family histories, which I tell you to do a lot on this channel. And you can also write up the information and place it on a lot of other um, online trees. Just write up your conclusion and make sure it's getting out there everywhere you possibly can think to leave that information. Maybe even put it into a genealogical society newsletter. My last tip is, you know, sometimes that inaccurate information you just got to leave it alone because again, like I said, some people have their tree where they are descendants of Thor and Odin 
and other Greek mythology characters that it's highly suspect they even existed. So that's my two cents on how do you handle inaccurate information that are on Ancestry.com trees. I want to hear from you. What do you do? Do you get frustrated? Do you try to negotiate? Do you have strategies I haven't covered? Write all of that in the comments section below. If you haven't already, please go ahead and hit that red subscribe button and the bell next to it so you will be notified when you visit YouTube when a new video is released.